There we go. <clears throat> Valorant will be the biggest esport of all time. Thank you. All right, all right. Before you make fun of me and say something very mean to me in the comments, I, I do genuinely believe that. And this video is going to be uh, one of those examples as to why uh, we're going to talk about Valorant's past and present and what can we expect in the future. That's right, baby. We got ourselves a Valorant video. And of course, I stream all the time on Twitch. You can find me at twitch.tv slash goldenboyftw, where I stream a variety of FPS titles and go over Valorant VOD so you can find me playing some Halo, Call of Duty, Overwatch, maybe some Battlefield, but most definitely Cyberpunk 2077. And I swear, CD Projekt Red, if you guys delay that game one more time, I probably will have to remove myself from this earth. Anyway, moving on. So let's talk about why I believe Valorant will be the biggest esport of all time. And I know that this is going to be a very controversial opinion, uh, but hear me out for a moment, indulge me if you will. If there's anything that the internet is known for, it's understanding and discussion. As I mentioned, we have to talk about how we got up to this point, because when Valorant released amidst the global pandemic, which we are still in, by the way, Valorant was kind of viewed as like a, a bastion for a lot of game devs. Like, can you release a game during such an event? And Riot proved that you most certainly can. Now, I know a lot of people weren't too happy about the fact that the game had a minimal amount of maps, not a lot of agents, but they were really trying to hone in on the mechanics of the game. And I think that without a doubt, it certainly proved to be one of the more enjoyable FPS games that released this year, especially competitively, uh, because we started to see competitions pop up almost immediately for this game. And when you have a tactical FPS game, people with natural desire to want to compete against each other, you best believe they're going to pew pew each other in the face. That also sounded sexual. Anyway, let's talk about Valorant Esports for a moment and its evolution up until First Strike, which is happening this week. So at the start, we had events like Twitch Rivals where content creators were playing against each other, but then we ended up with the Ignition Series. And this was, as the name implies, a series of tournaments that took place. We were seeing events like the PAX Invitational, Phase Invitational, Pop Flash. These were all events that were, at least in North America, Invitationals. Sure, you had some open competitions, but everything was basically like, are you an org? Do you have recognizable players? You got yourself a spot. And that was Valorant Esports for the better part of the last few months. But then comes First Strike, which will serve as the basis for what is most definitely to come in the future. Like while Ignition Series was the beginning, it was like getting the water at the restaurant, you know, with the ice and the lemon in it. And you're like, man, that's fancy. The First Strike event coming up is serving the appetizer before our main course. And First Strike is important because we're getting open merit-based competition. What does that mean? It means that anyone can compete, but only the best will earn themselves a spot at the main event. And that is it. That is the skeleton of Valorant Esports going into 2021. Because earlier, Riot announced the VCT or the Valorant Champions Tour. It's a huge deal because this is going to be the competitive format for Valorant throughout all of 2021. And it really does share some of the same traits that we're seeing here, the same rules and formats that we're seeing for First Strike. You have a few tiers. You have the Challenger tier, the Masters tier, and then the Champions tier. So the challenger tier is anyone can compete, including the top teams. This is a far departure from what Riot has been doing with the LCS, but it is a good move because by doing this, they're going to ensure that people want to remain involved in Valorant event after event after event. You're giving people a path to pro. And I know that that is not the best phrase to use, but trust me, that's exactly what we're seeing here. It's giving players an opportunity to be able to compete at a high level against other top tier players. Now for the teams that have their top squads and the best players, they want to get their seat at the table faster than anyone else. That unfortunately isn't going to happen throughout 2021. It's all based on merit. Are you good? Just like what we saw with First Strike, Cloud9 didn't qualify. And it's not that Cloud9 weren't the best team or aren't a great team. They're a pretty solid squad. But hey, if you don't perform at the tournament, you don't get a spot. That's just how it is. That's open merit-based competition. I should also talk about Masters and how that works because we did learn in the Valorant Champions Tour blog 
that Masters competitions are going to function a little bit differently for the time being. They said, during the stages where Masters tournaments remain regional, they will use the eight-team format of Challenger Finals. We're eager to pivot Masters events into international lands as soon as possible and will continue to monitor the situation closely for a safe time to do so. Not a shocker because we are still in this pandemic. That said, it's just going to be that carrot dangling on the stick for a little bit longer while we wait for that one international land to take place. And if no international land happens next season, then that means we're going to get one guaranteed at the Champions event at the end of the year. This will serve as the first strike, right? This is first strike two, not necessarily gonna be called that, obviously, uh, but this will be the sequel, right? Uh, the Empire, I don't know if it's Empire, but anyway, you get the point. Essentially, what we're gonna get here is open competition leading into regional base finals, just like what we got for first strike, and then the top teams will move on to the champions final it's a structure it's a great place to start now let's talk about why i think valorant is poised to be one of the biggest fps of all time now the answer is quite simple honestly it's global market appeal a game like valorant has a lot of positives to it when you take counter-strike for example one of the biggest hurdles that cs had is that despite it all especially for american tv audiences it's still a game about terrorists versus counter terrorists. And there really is no way to go around that. You still have real world weaponry and subject matter that still hits close to home for a lot of residents in the United States, but also for people all around the world. Whereas Valorant, it kind of borrows a little bit from Overwatch, right? Overwatch is a game in a fantastical universe with characters that can do crazy magical abilities. And yes, while Valorant and Overwatch also contain weaponry, it's still a lot more palatable rather than seeing someone walk around with an AK-47. There are also features in the game that can remove blood or even remove dead bodies. You have all of these things that give you that little bit of an advantage if you're Riot and being able to appeal to sponsors. It's not going to be easy. People are certainly going to question it and they may not get there right away. But given their track record of being able to sell sponsorships for the LCS, the LEC and beyond, I really don't think we're going to have a problem with Valorant getting in some top flights sponsors moving forward. I mean, they just announced the VCT and they already have a chair sponsor. Like that that just happened. There's no world where they're not going to have even more big endemic and non-endemic sponsors coming in and getting involved. By the way, uh, as of recording this video, Riot have just announced that Red Bull Gaming will be signing on board as one of the founding sponsors for the Valorant Champions Tour. So I think they're doing all right. And with the money potentially flowing in, the player talent pool being vast and continuing to import players from games like Overwatch and Counter-Strike, as well as the fact that you have them leaning on third-party tournament organizers while continuing to maintain the calendar, I do think that this makes Valorant a very strong competitor for the top eSport, not only in 2021, but maybe even beyond. Now, before you hit that dislike button, okay, you're gonna say to yourself, this man is bought and sold by Riot. How dare he? He makes some just ridiculous claims. Look, I'm not going to dispute that I have done and will continue to do Valorant Esports events. I'm not going to cover that up. Even if they dump me tomorrow, I'll still say the same thing because I look at esports as a whole. I look at so many different games, their successes, their failures, the things that could potentially hold them back and whether or not they should be able to expand out or whether they will shrink down the line. I look at a game like Rocket League as a great example of a game that just continues to flourish and grow. They do really smart things to get people to watch their shows, but more importantly, they've made a game that is engaging for so many people all around the world. And it's a very simple concept. This is something that Valorant has to an advantage that games like Counter-Strike only had. It's a simple idea. You have bomb sites, you have people who have to plant the spike, you have people who have to disarm the spike or eliminate the other team. It's a very simple idea. There's no payloads, there's, there's no changing game modes, there's no capture the flags or no hard points. It's just easy to digest and break down. That's the reason why I think it has so much opportunity across the market. We've seen what Counter-Strike can do. And I'll imagine a game that has Counter-Strike, but also has elements of Overwatch. That's really, really interesting. And, and quite frankly, 
I think if you're like any of those other games, you should be a little concerned because Valorant could very well take a big chunk of market share if Riot plays their cards right. But that is the important part, playing their cards right. Can Riot do this? Yes, they've done it with the LCS, but can Lightning strike twice? What will hold Valorant back is whether or not it could break into the Asian markets that it needs so desperately. What could hold the game back is if it doesn't properly tend to Europe and ensure that they're getting an abundance of competitions, not just in one centralized European region, but all over the continent. It is important that they support the scene there. How do they support Latin America? How do they get Brazil more involved and also Japan seems to have been a real sleeper hit for Valorant. How do you continue to leverage that while at the same time ensuring that you, they're not being left behind by their Korean counterparts? There is a lot of work that Riot has to do to ensure that Valorant will be the biggest esport of all time. But again, I'll look at their track record and that's a really good place to start. So I wanna hear from you. What are your thoughts? Do you think that Valorant has the potential to be the biggest esport of all time? Yes or no? Tell me why in the comment section down below. Also, join me on Twitch, okay? I stream there like quite a bit. All right, twitch.tv slash goldenboyf2w. It'd be a pleasure to have you there. I play Valorant, I go over Valorant VODs, but I also play a whole heap load of other FPS games and I'm a variety streamer, so you never know what I'm gonna be playing next. And if you like this video, hit the like button. I'm trying to get on the algorithm, ride the wave. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to get YouTube to recognize me. Subscribe to the channel because your boy's trying to hit 10K subs and that's basically gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of each other. Play more video games. Peace. Later.